Welcome back to Runner's Garden. It's the sun and here it's frost. It's kind of cool in the shade. He's getting his hip massage. There's Lenny. There's Maxie. We got baked beans in there, cauliflower going on here, and broiling a steak. I was in the States for two weeks, hanging out with my stepfather, just kind of checking in on him. One of the things that I really love to do is stop in at the Emmaus Run Inn. The reason why I stopped there is because I spent a good amount of time in that town growing up. My great-grandmother's house is on Main Street in Emmaus. And this time I decided I was going to get a pair of shoes. I was talking to the clerk and I saw a man in the back. He looked quite familiar. I said, who is that guy? And she said, that's Bud. Right? Turns out to be a pretty famous running coach. He's run under three hours, four different decades for the marathon distance, qualified for the Olympic trials four times, has written books. Very cool to meet Mr. Bud Coates, who took care of me in fitting me out for a new pair of shoes. I told him all the issues with my feet. He was very knowledgeable about foot anatomy and identified uh, the problem with my first metatarsal in my left toe. I have a condition called hallux limitus. Comes out with like, I don't know, maybe five pairs of shoes. I tried them all on. I ran around the store. He encouraged me to even go outside and take a run. So it was great having somebody so knowledgeable about running to you know, introduce me to all these different type of shoes. And I finally settled upon the A6 Keanu 30. First walk in these. The big Santa over there. Ho, ho, ho. In Taiwan now after a two week trip in the States. Going sockless today. I feel like such a rebel. Slip on ability. It's okay. I do like when shoes have a tab though. Hope you all had a really nice Thanksgiving. This place to myself, except for the leaf blower. Walking warm up is almost complete. Just doing like a kilometer here. Another train. I have jet lag, so I'm waking up a lot earlier than my wife. And once I go downstairs, I don't want to go back up into the room and grab a pair of socks. And my luggage is laying on the floor in the living room, so I had a pair of shorts. So I just threw those on, and out the door I went for this morning's workout. I'm about to run here. Easy off, too. I'll record out here so I don't wake up my wife. I stuck the garden gnome in the tree. I like to move them around. The last shoe review I did was the Asics Gel Nimbus 25, and I absolutely love these. Check out my video here. It looks like we have similar cushioning. Check out the bottoms too. Lots of hard rubber on both of them. The Keanu 30s, or gel Keanu 30s seem to have these tiny lugs on here. I don't know if that will result in more grippiness than these holes will. I did notice in my language school that on the tile floors, these were a little bit slippy. I don't know if our cleaning lady is doing something different, but I did not notice this in other shoes. Maybe it's because they're new, but you would think after they were more slick, I would have this problem after more wear has been occurring. 
as with the A6 Gel Nimbus, there's no carbon plate in here. It's semi-stiff. It's categorized as medium stiffness or medium flex. By comparison, these are a little bit stiffer. This is a road shoe. It is a daily trainer. It's good for up 5K on up to marathon, I'd say. They retail for $160 and I got them for $140. They gave me a 10% discount on my purchases. I also bought a lot of goo. This is the 30th anniversary of this shoe. One thing that's new is this mesh, very breathable, which is good for here in Taiwan. They come in 11 colors. I believe this is the deep ocean and white version, although it looks gray to me. The foam around the heel, I like the aesthetics of it. Look at those little lines. It's like wavy. The ASICS logo looks raised, but it's, it's not really, it's an overlay. It looks like it's um, stitched, but that's just an illusion. That's just lines on there. A little bit of reflectix on there, as well as here. The overlay around the holes for the laces. They say these run true to size. Seven and a half seemed small for all the shoes that I tried on. Maybe my feet are just flattening out, but now I'm going with eights. Bud was very happy about that because they had more options to give me. Oh, there is kind of a pull tab here. Huh, I just discovered that. A little bit of reflectix on there too. It's like a flap. On the ASICS website, they're giving this, or reviewers are giving this a four out of five. That's pretty cool that they're just honest about giving, you know, not giving five stars on their own website seems transparent really wide base big toe box lets your toes splay in there really roomy this is a stability shoe 4d stability guidance system for example you got the heel bevel you step down it's supposed to guide you into the proper foot plant all the way through to a smooth transition and toe off rubber kick plate in the front as most running shoes do. I told Bud that I was a heel striker and he said this is a good shoe for that. He said he's also a heel striker now. Some people have called this a Hoka lookalike. Certainly a lot of cushion. We're going from 40 millimeters here down to 30. So there's a 10 millimeter drop. Great soft landing. Inside of here is the pure gel. The foam is the FF Blast Plus Eco Cushion. FF stands for Flight foam. Flight spelled F-L-Y-T-E. Bud also had me try the Brooks Glycerin, which is a comparable shoe. Brooks uh, Ravinas were my first marathon shoes, which I bought from the run-in when the run-in was in a different location on the other side of the triangle in Emmaus. That must have been at least a decade ago. I've been running marathons for at least a decade. Check out this heel. It is really firm. The tongue is attached. There is some stretchy elastic material on both sides of this tongue. There's a removable inner sole and it says carbon footprint plus 10.7 kg CO2 E. This was just on my foot and we have been exercising. Sorry. From afar, do you want to make any comments? It's not too high, you know. Ever, yes, ever since I saw 40 millimeter stack. Yeah, but ever since I bought my super comps. This oh yeah, this <laughs> looks like super a comps are like high heeled shoes. Yeah. What are they, 40? New Balance Super Comp version one stack height. 47, okay, yeah. so it's seven more than that, but that yeah. makes a big difference. Yeah, yeah. seven, I don't know. Uh, there's gel inside there too. Oh, yeah. My other shoe, there's no freaking plate in here. <laughs> Look. Not gonna cut these open, but there's gel. <laughs> I liked the Nimbus and uh, and I went That's back, I went to the shop okay. and I was served by that guy I sent you, uh, yeah. Bud Coates, mm, yeah. pretty fit. Did you look up his bio? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was really cool to have yeah. he's semi, in, in the runner's world, mm. world, mm. He's, kind of, he's kind of famous. So it was yeah. Like, yeah, he's an ultra, right? Ultra runner? Or I just a marathon? He's done, he's done lots of marathons and he's 
gone under three hours in four different decades of his life. That's pretty good. Yeah. Mm. So, and his fastest is a 2.13. He ran pretty fast in, mm. in Boston. That's, that's, Boston, he got a 2.13. That's very good. Yeah, like even mm. today, if you get a 2.13, like that's... Yeah, I think Sage Kennedy, who I used to you know, follow, uh, I think his fastest was like 2.16 or something. Really? Yeah, I think yeah. so. I have to check that, but yeah. I think Well, it depends on race yeah. conditions and yeah. the course. Mm. Mm. They're doing construction next door if you, if you heard that. Yeah, so it's a good looking shoe. Mm. I, wear the, I wore these teaching a couple of days with like nice blue slacks or jeans. Wow. So good looking shoe. Handsome. I like the color because it's not going to get dirty. Looks like a comfortable shoe. Of course, I haven't tried it. I, I see try your, it on? No. Yours is, your feet are too small for me. I wear a size 11. <laughs> yeah, you will, you will have to cut the top off. We'll go get my saw. Okay. All right. <laughs> you want to sacrifice your shoe for me. How much was it? 160 but that's the retail. But I got 10% off. And so 144 yeah. And I bought, I actually got it for one about 140 and I mm. bought a bunch of goos. Mm. There were like 20 goos, five of which are yours. 140, that's, 140. that's decent. You um, know, the mm. ones that are one generation older mm. are now, like you can get them for like 60 bucks US. Oh, I would do that. You mean, so this, this has a one version earlier. Earlier. Just yeah, one like version. Like the 29s, these are the 30s. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, I just saw that at, on, on runners line, warehouse. that it's runners were probably always, yeah. always uh, so that's the difference between the new stuff and eighty dollars one mm. well one that's generation. what I did that's what I did with my ultras you know the ultra to ultras the Torin six that yeah. I got one year version yeah, you save a lot of yeah, money that way saved, I saved people always want the new bucks. stuff and they'll pay for it yeah yeah yeah. yeah. So I'll get the, this year's new stuff next year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it will be old, but only one year. I want to hear about, and you sent me pictures and video. I want to hear mm. about your trip. Okay. Did you start mm. from where we kind of came down the mountain after Yuan Zui? No. So oh, okay. um, I've, done, I've done this, they call it the National Trail. I don't mm. know why. It just maybe they like to, the sound. National trail. Well, it's a national park, right? It is a national park, okay. and the trail is actually about 19 or 20 kilometers from the bottom of Yuan Shan all the way to the top of the park where there's a pond. The bottom of Yuan Shan. Oh, so, okay. the bottom of Yuan Shan. Mm -hmm. So, and then the, if you climb it up and go along that ridge. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, Which we I did yeah, with yeah. Jeremy and James, but we came down right away after summiting. Yeah, so yeah. I think the section we did was maybe three or four kilometers only. Yeah, and there was, we came mm. to like an intersection where you could keep going. You could keep Shalai. going, Shalai. Yeah. Mm. So uh, on my second trip, I went all the way to Shaolai. From that point? No, I, we... I did from Yunzhe. Oh, you went? Oh. I went all the way to Shaolai and over to the park entrance. The section from Yuanzue to the park entrance is about eight kilometers. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. So I did one section of that with you, James and Jeremy. Yes. And then I did another section all the way from Yuanzue Shan to the park entrance, eight kilometers. Okay. okay. And ran then, back. And I ran back. Okay. On and the road. Then, on the road. That was before I had any problems with my knee. Yeah. And then the second time I went, I, I drove into the park. Wouldn't that be the third now? Yes, third. Yes, third. <laughs> yes. Thanks. I have very short memory. So it's the third one. I, I went by myself. I drove into the park, paid the $250 park entrance fee. Yeah. And I drove the car up to the first service station. They only have two. I parked my bike there, left it, and drove back down to the Shaolai entrance area uh -huh. where the trail came down. Yes. And I picked up the trail from there and I walked another eight kilometers mm. and rode my bike back down to the car. Okay, that Got was it. section two. The third trip. The third trip. So, okay, and this time... <laughs> I drove my car all the way to the top, the end of the road, and I put my bike there. What's that road called? 
It's just a national park road. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's inside the park. You have is to it the road. only main? It's the only road. All right. All right. It's the only road that if, goes into the park. If we're explaining this for people yeah. who want to do this. Okay. Yeah, it's like it's like the Skyline Drive, for example. Okay. Know? It's the only road that goes over the park. So, so I left the bike there, drove back to the second service station, put my car there, mm -hmm. and walked up to the pond. Where I got my bike and then back down to my car and bingo, it was done. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it took me four trips, including the one with you, Jeremy and James. Yeah. A thousand year old tree. Yeah. It's really a thousand years old. Yes. And the sign below the tree said a thousand years old. Yeah. Well, that one that's famous mm. in uh, Chito. Chito. Yeah. Mm. They, they, keep changing the number the estimate i estimate. mean even if it was like 600 years i would be like holy crap that's yeah, an old it's tree still pretty old so right? yeah mm. but that park has a lot of big trees and i sent you a video of another tree this is the first uh, mighty giant that i've run into on this trail it's about three kilometers in it's pretty big that was along the trail. Oh, okay. There are no shortage of big trees on this trail. It's a really beautiful uh, hike. How much water did you take? Only a liter. Okay. Yeah. And were there a lot of people on the trail? Not many. No, because I went on weekdays. Mm -hmm. That's the key. Right? Yeah, that's the key. Yeah. yeah, not many, not much traffic. Coming down on my bike, it was all downhill. Um, I didn't have any close calls with cars or anything. So. How long did it take you to drive there? From um, to the top of the park, it's like about two and a half hours. So from Donghua to the, the park gates is about two hours. Mm -hmm. And then it's another half hour, 45 minutes to get to the, the top, top end. service end center. The trouble uh, with this trail is that there's no public transportation, no mm -hmm. reliable. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you do one of the trails along the park ridge, Mm -hmm. the ridge of the mountains when you come out you don't have any way to get back that's why i put my my bicycle there yeah you know otherwise you'd have to hitchhike right or walk yeah or run hmm yeah, yeah. is it something you want to do again i would definitely do it but um why are you interested well i want to get our other things done first yeah. ah ooh, oh, oh, we yeah which you've already ah. done and Ba Xian Shan. Yeah, I think Wu Wo would be better to do first. Um, okay. And Ba Xian Shan after that. Well, when you come back from Japan. It'll okay. Be December, January, or right then. Cool. Anything yeah. else running related? Yeah, I'm getting back into runs. I'm getting an average of like 10K a week. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And doing a lot of biking still. Biking and trying to uh, do some weights. So I have a uh, frozen shoulder. Oh, okay. Yeah. Trying to build up the muscles. And a lot of walking. Staying active. Staying active. Yeah. I went with Lenny to his PT and I was really mm -hmm. amazed mm -hmm. at some of the stuff he did. Really? Like they have a full He's... out gym. Oh, that's good. With all kinds of stuff in there. They even have those lights that you stick on the wall and you, when they light, oh, you have yeah, to press them. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Cool. He didn't do that, but other people were doing I was watching what everybody was doing. Mm -hmm. And um, all kinds of varieties. It, it wasn't like only one brand of machine. It was like they picked the best machine of all these different companies. Whoa. Like they got top notch stuff. Is that a private, like a private gym? It's a like insurance pays for it. It's like for you know occupational therapy, physical mm -hmm. therapy, that kind of thing. Does he have a like a trainer that goes with? Yeah, him and uh, most often it's the same. But they mm -hmm. he knows about three or four of them, mm -hmm. who, depending on their schedules. Like one guy was getting married, so mm -hmm. another woman who actually was his first trainer came back to train him How and it's like a 45 go? minute session and he goes twice a week okay. Okay. All right, either. it's not right away no he just it depends on the doctor to be honest with you um but he's great over does he do any other sort of physical therapy uh, like activity he should but he doesn't they give him like they print out exercises that he's oh, supposed to do at home but he doesn't okay. do them yeah he used to do stuff when he was hurt last year in september mm -hmm. but this year i mean two is enough he said he's completely the second day he's completely drained and sore 
after like, after, after going, going to the gym. Yeah. yeah. Like he does real like you know, yeah. like uh leg press and mm. leg extensions and mm. he does a warm up of like six minutes on the elliptical runner, which is a seated a seated elliptical okay. runner. So like he's pedal seated. and also mm. use your hands. And he does these stretching mm. things with a with a ball, mm. a Swiss ball. So seated stretch. Seated, yeah. I started to do more dumbbell exercises mm. for, for my shoulders. And I found, the, you know, dozens and dozens of good videos on mm -hmm. YouTube. Really, really good. And so I press dumbbells for seniors, 15 <laughs> minutes, by, you know, how much time I think I have. Yeah. And it's, you know, there's like, 20 choices. Yeah. All the ones I've done are really good. I mean, I really feel like I, I you know, yeah. stretched. It's, it's the... good to get uh, variety, so you can mm. do a different one every, yeah. every time. Yeah. yeah, it's really fun. That's why I've got more muscles. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Taiwanese goo. Ooh, energy And gel. it is foul. <laughs> <laughs> it's the foulest, it's nasty, nasty, disgusting. Oh, so I have to um, warn me. Warn you, even if you got run out of goose, don't get that. So stay away from super power. <laughs> uh, is that one flavor? They only offer one flavor. It looks uh, like it's in a gasoline or Windex yes, yes, container. It's a, it's a, <laughs> they, they all look like this. Okay, and I so got this from your favorite shop, the Taoyuan Li Camping Shop. Carbo Taoyuan. Relax. Relax. So they put caffeine in it and they call it a carbo relax. They don't even have the right. Okay, quickly convert instantly supply. <laughs> coffee flavor. And it doesn't taste like coffee. It, it tastes like crap. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, you'll be happy. I didn't. I forgot to bring them in here, but okay. I have at least, I think I have five goos for you. Oh, okay. In Thank addition you. to the other. Gift. Oh, thank you so very much. much. Replenish thank my you. power supply. I was giving the Taiwan Goo Company a chance. Yeah. You know, but um, yeah. Is that what just, it is? Taiwan Goo Company? Yeah. The name is called Delight Brothers. Okay. <laughs> International Company. <laughs> and it's located in New Taipei City. I should have checked the ingredients before I bought it because the amount of sugar in this is just obscene. Really? How 30, many grams? 33 grams of sugar. Oh. And uh, the goos that we use, the normal ones that you buy. They in don't States, have anything compared to. No, I know. They're usually about 10. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. It's one, one third. Sugar. It really looks like the gas <laughs> can take. This is like a gas pump here. <laughs> So I'm saving Jesse this. Jesse says, for, "Stay away from this." <laughs> I'm saving this for a major effort. Maybe we will, we will wait, Sean. This would be good. Just throw it in the trash. No, 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 no. I'm not. Oh yeah, he's not a wasteful guy. guy. I don't waste. Let's play some music. All right. I feel like I'm 17 again. <laughs>